Attention, cool kids. Cool Stuff, Inc. is partnering with me, CGB, on a special limited edition all-metal shark token. This is a one-time only production run with each token individually numbered and totally unique. Pre-orders are only open from August 23rd through September 5th. After that, they'll never be offered again. Don't miss your chance to get one of these unique tokens by going to CoolStuffInc.com slash CGB. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are going to ask the epic, often asked question by someone, somewhere, every now and then, occasionally. And that is, is Simic Ramp actually Tier 1 in Standard 2022? Arjuna, my co-host on the Arena Craft Podcast, by the way, a weekly podcast about Magic the Gathering Arena. We also post the videos right here on this channel. Arjuna thinks that Simic Ramp is Tier 1. He, he believes it's one of the best decks in the format. It has a strong go-over-the-top strategy that, when effectively ramped, can throttle decks like green and mono white, while also going over the top of decks that try to gain mid-range value and maybe play out their threats a little uncautiously, like a, a blood money deck, perhaps. And he believes it is tier one. I am unconvinced. I have said I still think that it's tier two, but I will not go without at least testing my assumptions. So that's what we're up to today. We're going to play the deck that Arjuna plays card for card, exactly the way that he would set it up, because he does have a good track record. The last two times he said this deck is tier one when everybody else was like oh i don't know about that deck pretty early on in the format the first was teamer adventures back when lucky clover was legal and the second was altai emergent ultimatum and it was like the day after kaldheim was released so it was before everybody was on that deck so he's had a good track record and uh, he you know he, he's a smart guy but i'm Man, I'm still not sure. I'm just not I'm just not convinced. Is Neverwinter Dryad a tier one card? Is is a deck with like blue but not counter spells, you know, just some some divide by zero action, an into the royal. Does a glass pool mimic make the cut? This one is probably the card I'm really skeptical of. Eureka Moment. Draw two cards. You may put a land from your hand on the battlefield. I can also see the upside in a card like a Seeker's Chariot, but when I see it in this deck, I'm asking myself, is this a mid-range deck or is this a ramp deck? Because if you feel like you have to have a mid-range game plan, mid-range plan, backup plan, are you really are you really that confident that your over-the-top strategy can get the job done? I do love the Ashaya Soul of the Wild. It makes all of your creatures uh, lands. It turns them into forests, which means that Cyclone Summoner uh, will not return them to your hand. So it's a one-sided board wipe type, just go over there and kill them. And it's also a ramp card, because you can tap it and any other creatures you control for mana. The Mordenkainen is also an interesting choice. It's like we decide to attack from a different angle, but... Maybe we're just supposed to ramp into the biggie, big things. Of course, All Runs Epiphany isn't very controversial, and the land should be good. Very curious about three Quandrix Campus versus two Snarls. I think I'd easily be in on the four Snarls, because I believe that hitting your lands untapped is insanely important. Three Campus, I guess that means that that's like a nod that we are going to use the scry land sometimes. Wishboard seems fine. Two Sciences, two Exhibitions, and then some of the other fillers. Totally into that. All right. Is it tier one? We're going to go play some games, see how it goes. We'll check the stats at the end and we'll take our impressions. And maybe we'll also come up with some suggested uh, things to try out. But for now, let's go answer the question. Let's dive in. Let the Simic Ramp nonsense begin. All right, we get to start off with Ramp, Ramp, Ramp. Hopefully we draw some Blamp, Blamp, Blamp. I think you just always keep the hands with like four lands, three ramp spells. Your deck has to be able to draw into the good stuff. If it doesn't, it's not your deck, you know? You, you weren't gonna win anyway. Oh yay, white trash. Let's do it, baby. Hmm. Kinda wanna play Innkeeper Other Dryad. Is that silly? Cause then I can block with one of them. But I think really I'm just supposed to ramp here. Yeah, ramp, develop mana. That's how these decks have to work. 
We're gonna have to draw and cast a Cyclone Summoner pretty early. I mean, you should be attacking, but I guess it doesn't matter too much in this case if you know I'm gonna ramp anyway. I think you should offer the trades, but, eh, who knows. <laughs> so our creatures are our lands at this point. So, Elite Spellbinder, you'll be really impressed with this hand. Yeah, baby, get him. Taste it. Hmm. Do I want to kill one? Am I going to gain more life than this with the Innkeeper over time? Is the question we should ask ourselves. I don't think the answer is yes. So, I think we take that trade. Innkeeper can gain a lot of life, but it takes, I don't know, takes things going pretty well for us from there. We'll say go. We've got Layer of the Hydra, who can be a 3-3 to block an Usher, potentially. Or we could try to trade it with another Neverwinter. Oh, they're going to Haven? That's weird. I mean, we can just block that and like this. It's... Their hand can't be very good, <clears throat> but it's probably better than mine. <laughs> All right, we've got our mana. Can we draw non-land cards? This is where drawing a card like into the Royal makes me cringe so hard. But anyway, we've got a 7-7. Seven, seven. Can we race our opponent? Nah. They can just power up Haven. Wow. Didn't expect this. I think. All right. I mean, they did it last turn, but they're just they're just running into the hall. They have stone rained themselves effectively. They can make a 1-1 one, one with their Usher. And they will. Alright, can I draw, say, an Allruns Epiphany? Okay. Fun. Might be bouncing the Spellbinder here. We'll see how they attack. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can have a 3-3 three, three Hydra and still cast into the Royal. All right, that's got to get bounced, I think. Very obnoxious card. Another Haven. They have played this whole game weird. Okay, there's my blocker. So, I've got enough mana to play anything, even through the Redane, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I do. I can cast anything I draw through the Redane. Let's prevent the damage from the Spellbinder here. Okay. There we go. Yeah, baby! The fight is real. The struggle is real. Oh, what can we divide for here? Teachings, basic conjuration. I don't think he has teachings in the sideboard. Or, yeah, it, conjuration it will have to do. Alright, so they still have enough mana to play this again. I guess we just let them hit this. We don't want to give them the free second spell for the monk anyway. Okay, they're going to do this anyway. Let's bounce Redain. Or I guess we don't want to do that because then they will exile the lesson with the spellbinder. 
We're threatening to block their monk. We don't want to block their... We want these to block these. So we want to bounce Redain. And we get Conjuration to try to go find Cyclone Summoner. Never mind. Cyclone Summoner is here. Do we just want to smash the... We just want to drop the summoner? Seems good. 7-7 seven, seven is big. Let's uh, give them the bird business. They might believe it's another All Runs Epiphany. Who knows? All those go home. And we can take an innkeeper. Uh, if we take a cultivator, it will get hit by one of the spellbinders, perhaps. The innkeeper can get on the board right now. But I think we just want the cultivator. Bigger body. More upside. Feeling that three life. I, I, I like that. This is one of the only decks that I think runs Conjuration effectively. Like, I hate when I see the green aggro decks playing this. It's just too slow. Better off with like environmental sciences. Yep, here come the flyers again. It's a lot of airborne damage. So we're far from out of the woods. <laughs> okay, okay, deck. Get them. Yeah, we can also power up Paul next turn and just they have to start chump blocking or they're gonna take lethal. Yeah, they, they're actually under tremendous threat next turn. Now, they should have some chump blockers, so they continue an aerial assault. That's uh, annoying. But yeah, we got a close one now, because we're going to fall to eight. If the opponent plays the Spellbinder, they have eight points of threatening in the air. Potentially lethal attack. We need an All Runs Epiphany, another Cyclone Summoner, the Glass Pool Mimic, a Learn card like Divide by Zero. We just need something to throw off the map. They're not playing the Spellbinder. Unless they have a land and they're slow rolling us. Wow. They're going all one drops. Interesting. Let's see what we can scry for. Shuari Disruption. Do we upkeep Scry here? One of the most overrated plays in Magic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually think we do. All right, my turn. Okay. Okay. I take back everything I've ever said bad about the upkeep scry, except for the fact that I can't cast this because <laughs> of Redate. All right, that's not good. Um, let's see, I'm taking five in the air for sure. And I can block two of these and I take another three and I die. Yeah, I'm dead because I can't cast it. All right. Well, first game, not good. <laughs> These, oh man, the campus did not save the deck from itself. All right, I, I'm, I went from rank number 184 to rank 997 in three games. I no longer am asking if this is tier one. I'm asking if it can win a single game. Is it actually capable of a victory? I might actually cast Eureka Moment. It's it's rotted in my hand until I died every game so far. So that's exciting. Opponent with Neverwinter Dryad and Red Mana. Interesting. Uh, 
All right, they might have divide by zero or some other nasty cards in their in their deck. I'm just gonna resolve it. All right, the card effectively drew more lands and played one. Well, that's going to be really annoying against the summoner. I mean, what am I supposed to do here? Charge? Sure. Aggro layer of Hydra. <laughs> you thought the innkeeper meta was over. It's only just begun. Bar. Counter or divide by zero? Yep. Easy choice. I can't believe Arjuna doesn't run this card. It's so good. Especially in a ramp deck. That's gotta be that's gotta be wrong. Let's try to get more value out of our next summoner. That's aggressive. Yeah, this person even runs multiples of them. How about that? I'm guessing we're going to get crackled with power. Not bad. But that does mean they're going to get Cyclone summoned. Kind of weird. I mean, that is really aggressive. Kind of a cool play here. We get them both back anyway. We could also play this as a land, but let's not. We're down to eight life. Our opponent's going to be at a million from these innkeepers. And it looks like they're on the burn spell plan with the magma opus. So we need to learn again and go get conjuration just for the life, I think. Funny, they empty that whole hand in one turn. That's how good teachings is in a ramp deck. Morty. Start here? We gotta start hitting them somehow. They scoop! They scoop? They were two magma opus away from victory! And they had a billion life! That's how we win games? I never would have guessed. Wow. I, I I don't even I don't even know what to say. I just need a game worth showing here. 
I need, I need something I can show the people and entertain them. Um, we might have chariot or cultivator on three if we actually draw land. Turn one usher from the opponent. Wonder if we're supposed to block with Dryad. We need the land so badly. Oh my goodness. That's just embarrassing. That's just Oh, we are we are screwed. We are as screwed as it gets. We need the land. There's no way around it. God, I hate this card sometimes. Hmm, interesting. Guess we'll get the innkeeper on the board. We can start gaining life. Good choice. I'm not having no problems. All right. I'm putting it this way. I think I gotta take this because if we don't draw the land, we do absolutely nothing. Drawing the land is nice. And this is a pretty big blocker for the board. We'll see if they have another apparition. Of course. This really has been an embarrassing outing. Like, absolutely embarrassing. I have been destroyed by everything. It's not even close. <laughs> On the draw, it's another hand that looks unplayable, but that's because of Eureka Moment and Into the Royal, two cards I would never put in this deck at this point. But I've got to play the deck as it's presented. I think most people would keep the hand. Cobra. My god, it's so terrible when you can't play it on turn one. It kills me. It makes me so upset. Am I supposed to bounce the Cobra? Um, Play this next turn and activate it? Maybe. Letting them have a four drop here seems so terrible. You know what? Maybe I'm supposed to do this. Okay, we have to get to Cyclone Summoner. Cyclone Salvation. Huh, <laughs> you got time to dirtle for a card. It's gonna be the long way, guys. It's gonna be a long road in this one. If we're gonna get there, it's gonna be a bit of a miracle. But, but, it's kind of coming together. Kind of coming together. If they go for the chariot, we bounce it. That slows them down a little. On our turn, we Epiphany, Player Hydra, tapped, untapped Cyclone Summoner. Any wizards out here? In green? Should be druids, right? Ah, 
Ah, okay. Bad news, they can activate Chariot in response, get in a ton of damage. Well, we get to keep trying to play the game. No, we don't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. What a joke. They had to think about that. That's the embarrassing part. Okay. Okay. This might be the most dumpster of a video I've ever made. Let's see. We go first. We have creature lands. We have divide. We have this piece of trash. Okay. Let's see what happens. Gosh, the campus with the creature lands is so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> oh man, it's killing me. It's killing me. Arjuna, what, are, what were you smoking? It's fine. The Eureka moment will fix it. It's fine. White Trash Part 20. Just, there are no other decks. Well, maybe we're about to prove that being a mid-range deck is better. <laughs> God. Die. Okay, they just make a 1-1. One -one. In that case, we are going to Eureka moment. Wow. Well, at least we don't have Snowlands to mess with. If they go in for the Haven, we just bounce the Redain here? Man, do they love Haven. Okay, Conjuration I think is usually best. But, I don't know. You never know what else is in their hand, but when they have four cards and they're activating Haven, I'm just like, oh, do they know what's up? Do they really know what's up? They can get Redain back down, but it doesn't help them against Summoner, and it doesn't really help them against the Chariot. That helps, of course. They usually have it, because there aren't a lot of good targets. No attacks. Well, you like to see that. Ooh. Ooh! I mean, we could slam that and just say beat this. We could also slam the summoner. I guess we come out pretty far ahead on that exchange, and you don't really want to play it after Coma, so Summoner's probably better here, which means we should attack first. Show him who's boss. Who's the beat down here? <laughs> Take it. And we have 4-4. Four, four. Oh my gosh, I might do it. I might win. This could be the turning of the tide. We could have worked out all the bad juju.
Show him what's up. You want to take 11? That's what I thought. I love how they prioritize. Oh, I gotta get Redain down. Eh, I got a million mana, and I play creatures. They don't care about Redain, and I don't have Snowland. Seems like a lot for Mono White to handle. <laughs> Good game. Uh, yeah, dab. <laughs> dab on him. I feel like we did it. I feel like we absolutely turned the tide. Now it's nothing but a straight run back up to top 500 and beyond. On the play with a Dryad and the mana to use it. Let's go. Second Dryad's interesting. But yeah, we're just gonna sacrifice this. Looks like we get green. Should be a good matchup. Nope, green red. Gruel with Goldspan Dragon can be a little tougher. We'll see. We've got something else here, okay. Well, they had to get their Kazandu Valley on the field, but then they came flying out. All kinds of ramp on their side. Part of the problem with these ramp decks, man. Everybody ramps now. It's not a novel strategy. Well, I like that they've already taken six damage. That's cool. Now they gain it back, though, because they've got Innkeeper. Hey, I got one of those. Nice. We are a Snarl deck, so hold the basic till the end if you can. Cat cars versus cat cars. Oh, you know they're charging up. You know they're gonna charge that baby up. They can't not charge this up. All right, so what do you think they've got? Do they have a way to make it indestructible? They don't run Blizzard Brawl. They might run the Dragon's Fire card. Hi, everybody. What you doing? Let's see how they stack this damage. The Neverwinter Dryad is there if they somehow kill two cats. All right, so they're saying, I'm going to kill these two cats. These are going to live. Cool. Weird that they wanted the 2-2s two dead and left the 3-4 alone. They just don't want this to be able to copy anything. Well, joke's on them. I've got birds. Kaka. Hmm. Okay. A little bit of life gain seems nice. You can also copy a treasure here, but I think we do this. Empty-handed, though. We're going to need some cards that don't suck near the top of our library. They'll probably trade off for this. But if they trade away the Sentinels... Okay, they do have the Dragon's Fire after all. It's another land. We need this to block this. These can't attack because these have reach. We do nothing. We're now waiting for our deck to deliver. Please don't gold span dragon me in the meantime. Our opponent with all action land. <laughs> uh, I hope they draw basics the rest of the game. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't think either side has a good attack until the board changes. But let's see. They're touching all the cards. Who knows? I'm sure they have like the third Shatter Skull smashing because the shuffler is fine. Nice. Great draw. 
Top tier. Land from the opponent, still not a basic. They don't believe in them. Hey, that one attacks and blocks on a pretty epic scale. What is that currently, a 9-9? Nine -nine? That's hype. Card touching. Yeah, there's. it's the same as it's been for the last three turns. Except for one teensy tiny layer of the Hydra. I'm like, what are you, a magma opus out of nowhere? Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and we have decided. Nothing. Nothing is the answer. Wow. That is... Oh! Not bad. Not bad. We can also use these to make mana. So what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, six? I guess they could kill it, so let's not. But that is... That is huge. Holy crap, that is huge. Opponent mana checks. I mean, are you gonna play Crackle with power? <laughs> They've got 10 mana. Why do they touch my birds every turn cycle? They're... They're just birds. They're just will birdies. Well, Birdos. All right. A shy is going in. Is the Hydra going in too? Sure. Brrrr. Better block. A block. Take ten. Okay. So they're holding on to these for something. They got some kind of overrunny effect. All right, I mean, show me what you got. You have hit every land drop as well. We've both drawn a ton of land. My land, my my mana creature is much bigger than yours. It's been kind of a determining factor. Oh, a shy of being a house. That, that's also not bad. <laughs> Hey, they didn't touch all my cards that time. I, I appreciate that. All right. So it was a 10 last time. So we'll do an 8 this time. Because 8 is lethal. It means they have to block. Now the rest of this also adds up to 8. So they would have to block elsewhere too. But they could just eat birds with sentinels. So it's not like the trades are good. We could attack with this, but an extra three damage doesn't make a difference. The den of the bugbear is here to die. There's the chumps. The divide by zero should definitely be enough. There's the lair. Their lair showed up late, but just just consider the amount of drawn lands on both sides in this particular matchup. Tell me, tell me again that the shuffler is fine. We want to hold up divide by zero from the treasurer, the innkeeper, and the cultivator. So 
So they go block, block. We get two points in. Does it matter? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know what they could have, and we're kind of just whittling them away, but it's okay. We might as well play it safe. Sure. Won't save ya on its own. Or mana short of a mascot exhibition. Maybe they have the land? <laughs> They're looking at their situation like, how on earth am I one mana short? How? After all of that. <laughs> I still want to know what the last card is. I don't get to find out. Back to the top 1,000. Now we roll. All right. On the draw, but we have Chariot pretty quick. I think that's a keeper. I love Divide by Zero. I have noticed in the ramp deck, there are a lot of times when I really don't want it. Well, our opponent has opened with... Revealing their gold span dragon. That's just an alpha move. That's that's pure alpha move right there. <laughs> Reveal gold span dragon, play nothing. Alright. Magda. Cool. Their hand is good. See if they want to charge the Magda into the innkeeper. Turns out they love treasure. A lot. I mean, I get it. They're very good at magic. Alright, so we need to divide by zero this dragon. We might draw the other snarl in the deck, so we'll play this. Do we play it on blue or do we play it on green? I guess we'll play it on green. If they don't play the dragon, we can bounce the Magda just to do something with our mana if we feel that. I really want to get to where I can have play Quandrix Cultivator and have three mana to divide the dragon again. Players are often sensitive about their dragons. They really want them to resolve. What do I need? I need Coma. You just gotta jam the dragon, man. Waiting. Oof. When you know the list, waiting doesn't get better for you. You just gotta play it. You just gotta get through the divides. Alright, for us, I guess we could get the containment breach and then maybe they won't play that chariot again. Or at least they'll think about it. I don't know if that actually solves our problem. I think we need you, but I think we also need to hit land. In keeps? Sure. Pretty good. Yep, they go for dragon this time. Oh, are you mad? Alright, I'll get the... Still don't know if getting containment breach actually solves anything when it comes to the chariot, because they still have a board. I don't think it's meant for that. I think I'd rather have this and try to find Cyclone Summoner. Cyclone Summoner and Coma is what we need. Okay, we still have to make progress on our mana, don't we? Which 
Choices, choices. We could play this so that, well, I guess if they play dragon, they're just going to also play the cat car. So playing this doesn't really help much. Can bounce the dragon. It's not very good either, but we're trying to hang in there. It's just endless though. Let's see if they sack these for double treasure with this on the stack. <laughs> I guess they can't really in the combat phase and then also play chariot. Doesn't work that way. Here it comes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's dig. We need a big power play. There's one. Still not the best against Goldspan Dragon, though. They just keep coming down for four more damage, but I guess we get a seven, seven to start attacking them with. Sure. I guess that's a free point of life. No chariot attacks. Wonder what they're afraid of. They're just so happy to get their their dragon is so happy to get some action here. It's been it's been blocked for three turns. Magda number three. Brar. <laughs> Pick him up. Pick him up. Let's try that again. And they will. Dragon is getting right back here. I think we go for double cyclone here. Oh man. That's so much life though. But I guess if you start hitting them for that much damage every turn, it's helpful. But they can just run this back next turn. Gain so much. That's pretty good. Start taking chunks out of them 14 at a time. That'll get their attention. The opponent had so much fun last turn, they get to do it again. You know? It's awesome. Good sequencing, making sure they get double treasure mana by playing the dragon there. Now they get to play out all the stuff they did before. Da -da 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 -da. Roar, go the summoners. How much damage are you gonna take? All of it. And again. So we can power up the hall and they have to block everything or they die, or we could develop more. And since they can avoid dying, I think it makes more sense to develop. Eh, just keep these back. Make sure the dragon doesn't hit us any more this game. If we're gonna take a more defensive line, let's play like it.
And a cat car of our own. Whole bunch of life. Yep, double dragon. Good job. You, uh, you, you'll go save that poor lady who got picked up on the street by those hooligans with your double dragons. So much treasure. But no life. Isn't that just, isn't that just sad when you see people who have all the money, but no life points? I think we can kill him. It's actually, maybe not. It's close. So let's start here. Power up cat car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Power up hall. Do, you know, giant stuff. Bring it. a lot of damage. You're gonna have to survive. Now, can they somehow counterattack for this lethal? They do have a layer of the Hydra, but we have a... We have a cat token to block it. What you got? The last cat token stands between us and doom. You think of how much, how big they could have made that Hydra if they had more treasure too. All right, we have definitely turned the tide. We are we are swimming downstream once again after a tough start. Make it rain. KPS is ranked number one thirty three. All right, I get this win. It'll get some... The deck gets a little street cred. No green, but I think we keep it. On the play. I said no green, I mean no blue. But if we end up cracking both of these and still unable to cast these cards, it's gonna feel really bad. I'm gonna be like, where was the field trip, man? If this was field trip, you could have an environmental sciences, could fix everything. That's into the royal. It's been there, like, all the time. Hey, check that out. It's a good thing I'm good at this game. Otherwise, you know, magic would be hard. I don't know how other people do it. Teamer? Party? All right, probably just party. Probably the pathways are just there for the, what is it? Tazri? The general? All right. Do we Eureka moment? I think I'm supposed to have board presence. Maybe I'm wrong. It's just how much I don't trust that card, really. Yeah, party's probably an issue unless we find summoner, so we have to find Cyclone Summoner pretty quick. There's Limvala. Another Cultivator. That gives us to three mana. Doesn't play the moment. I think we should play the moment now because of concerted defense. Is that how you say it? I don't know. It's a lot of turtle power. A lot of turtle power. We'll need this into the royal to hit something useful so we can get our card draw on. If they actually play the Tazri, that would be nice. Instead, it's Arc Priest. Why are they manually tapping to cast a one mana card that they only have one white to pay for? All right, they're definitely, they're definitely, it's almost like they're trying too hard to represent, you know? That's what it feels like. They're trying too hard to represent the defense. 
Oh wow, I can't block any of this. That's nice. That's, that's good stuff. We're gonna get absolutely blown out by party here if we don't draw a Cyclone Summoner, and there's only three in the deck, so the odds are not good. The odds are that we draw nothing good. Chariot. They have all this flying power. I guess Chariot goes a little bit wide. But we do need the lands, because we need to play for the defense, which it makes us pay for. None of this is good. They're just going to fly over and kill us. I guess we do this because we can pay, and maybe they'll play it anyway. Yeah, they let that resolve. I don't know if Into the Royal does anything here. I guess we can try to break up the party at instant speed. They're, like I said, I think they're trying too hard to represent that they have the counter spell. So I'm going to make them have it here. Okay, how do we break up the party? We can't, right? We actually can't. Because there's these two paragons, so they'll make up whatever side is not us. Gotta be Cyclone Summoner. Indestructible, huh? Seems good. Well, we're getting Clown Card because no Summoner. And I, this is where I just hate that we have cards like Into the Royal Eureka Moment Chariot. Like, you know, I had opinions, but I'm good. It's fine. This is fine. Uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, I was, I was poking some fun. I was, I was being a bit of a joker. This is just a free life, so we'll lead with the innkeeper. How? How do we do it? Deck is clearly tier one. Clearly tier one when you draw like that. <laughs> Wait a minute, these are all wizards. That's not good. That's not even good! Somebody, they're all wizards. And giants. <laughs> that, this matchup is terrible then. Right? That makes this matchup embarrassing. What are we talking about here? Arjuna, how do you pretend you can win? And you call this tier one and party not? Pathetic. And we are back for the post-game wrap, and let's check the stats, powered by untap.gg. Five and six. Not... not what I would expect. Uh, not what I... not what I hoped for, certainly. Ranked from number 354 up to 1,025. And uh, you could say maybe it was a bad outing, but I think that it definitely shows that experiences on ladder very right because arjuna was winning a lot has posted very good stats with the deck and i man i i can't it it's such a struggle and i have so many issues with some of the cards and uh, the way that some things line up and um dude i i i don't see it i don't see it I, it's a good deck there's power here and I'll probably try a different version in a little while, but this is not Emergent Ultimatum from Standard. It's not on that power level. It's not Team or Adventures either. Has so many weaknesses. Has so many clunky draws. I really, like, I don't know. I want to apply, like, more time and just try to smooth it out. I, I feel like there's 
I feel like there's a creativity. Like, there's a lot of TLC put into the numbers of the list and finding the one ofs that make sense and things like that. This is definitely another player's baby, not mine, because I see these cards as weaknesses. Arjuna probably knows exactly what they're there for and what they do. I I haven't had that same experience. I do think you need a Teachings, though. I think Teachings of the Archaics in a ramp deck is just great, because the deck runs out of gas and floods out way too often. I think Arjuna would agree with that. And I don't think it's Introduction to Prophecy. I think Teachings is way better. Way better. Anyway, that's my take on it. But obviously, uh, what do you think? Am I... Am I too dismissive? I, I had said this deck was tier two before on the podcast. Now I wouldn't even put it there, but that's what a bad day on the ladder does to some people. And I think we've all been there. I know you guys have. You love to take my new deck that I post every day, go have a bad day and then post a comment being all mad. So this is, I guess, my version of my own YouTube comments where I take a deck somebody else is really high on, have a bad day, and then I'm all mad. So anyway, uh, still, I'm, I'm curious. Well, where would you guys put the deck? Also, Arjun, don't hate me. Maybe I'm just not a master. Maybe that's what's missing. Thank you for watching this video, as always. I'll see you in the next video. You're cool.